1960 Alberto, in a small town, border town of 8,000 people on the border, uh, you were expected to be really, especially the son, my father was successful in Mexico, and therefore I had to be successful, and I didn't want to be a cowboy, he was a cattleman. So I went into business, I went to college, got a university, and, and then I was sent by Levi Strauss. I worked for Levi Strauss in San Francisco, I loved it. But I was then sent to Argentina, Brazil, and Mexico in 1971, 72, which was highly homophobic. And uh, I lasted four years in the corporate life, and then I decided to become a hairdresser. And I liked hairdressing, Alberto, but it wasn't that I was like passionate for it. It was more like, this is how I'm going to get to be myself because the corporate world of the seventies freaked me out so much. It was 1982, I believe, when a hairdresser, a girl, a woman, who was still my dear friend, Anna, um, said to me, have you heard about this weird cancer thing that's happening in Los Angeles? I was in Phoenix at the time. And I'm like, no, no. So I looked into it and I looked into it more and I realized that it was devastating. To make a long story short, I was eventually recruited by a local group uh, uh, in Phoenix and we founded the very first AIDS agency yeah. It was called Arizona AIDS Project. Mm. And I'm sure most people do not really understand how crushing that was, that we had no no, no government support whatsoever. And I had my, my best friends die in my arms. It was very difficult, but we made it through. And um, I think for me, the AIDS epidemic crystallized my resolution or my resolve to be really out. Giving me as much pleasure as having a child. I had no idea, this came out in April, and every day I will hear, because my email is on the back of it, and I, I did it that way, because I had a sense that people would read the book and want to ask me something, and they did, and oh, did they ever. I have heard people have come out, people have, uh, people have forgiven their sons and daughters and forgiven each other. And I think the most remarkable message, the first one I got that made me go, whoa, was a woman that has known me for years, years and years and years and has been what I think a friend. And she wrote, I never understood why somebody like you would choose to be gay. Such a difficult life and such a bad choice, she said. Now that I read the book, I realized it was never a choice and I admire the gay community much more. And, and it is about that. For anybody who is watching this and holding back in any way who they really are, because they feel they will lose out on something. Oh, and many times because they feel they are sp sparing someone's feelings or uh, the, uh, the, to know that they really are queer. I have to say, as an old man of 76, let it go. Get out there. Do it. Don't waste your time at all. Live today.